Wonderful. If there are any tech problems and uh, you can't uh, hear or see the uh, me anymore, please let me know and we will resolve it as quickly as possible. But thank you all so much for joining us this morning. Uh, do we have anybody else in the waiting room gown or are we okay to nope. get going? No, nope, we'll just get going. We can add the others. Fantastic. Well, welcome everybody. Thank you so much for joining our February February Cycling webinar with SSDA and some actually fantastic speakers today. Uh, what we want to talk about today is how fantastic the South of Scotland is for cycling, but also to give uh, all of our businesses in the region a better insight into uh, why cycling is a fantastic opportunity, how to make the most of the market, and how you can get ready to welcome more cyclists to your business. So a quick overview. Let's start talking about cycling today. We'll get into why cycling matters to the region, the state of cycling in the region. Gowan's going to have a bit of a closer look at the cycling market, what uh, businesses are already offering, what um, what their tips are. And then we've got three fantastic guest speakers today. So welcome to Billy from the Glenshaw Hive, Josh from Southwest Scotland Cycle Training, and Laura from Council Breeze Bikes. And then finally, at the end, we're going to have a bit of a discussion, see what you've been able to take away from it, uh, some new ideas that you might have, and also any questions that you want to ask the speakers and ourselves. So let's get started. If you have any questions um, as we go through any of the slides, please feel free to pop them in the chat and then we'll get to them at the end. So why should we all care about cycling? Many of you might already know the South of Scotland offers the unmissable experiences in every season. And as we develop tourism in the region and the visitor economy, we want to make sure that sustainable and active travel are really crucial parts of this year-round offering. We want to attract more people to come to the region, but we also want to make sure that none of our fantastic landscapes, attractions and places get too overwhelmed uh, with travellers coming in. And uh, sustainable travel like cycling can be a really wonderful opportunity for that. Globally, adventure tourism, which includes cycling, is valued at $445 billion a year. And we also find that with a lot of research that's been going on on sustainable tourism, that 61% of travellers do want to travel more sustainably. So coming into a destination and then looking at slow travel options, looking at walking places, cycling places, making use of local public transport. In Europe, cycling is already a very popular uh, part of tourism. There are 2.3 billion cycle touring trips in Europe every year, resulting in um, an economic impact of 44 billion euros. Absolutely fantastic. And attracting even a small portion of these travellers to the south of Scotland could create an incredible economic impact. In Great Britain, 290,000 trips included adventure sports such as cycling, and they contributed £112 million to the local economy. Overall, in Scotland, we have 1,643 miles of national cycle networks and uh, 90 million annual trips on this network. And mountain biking itself contributed 105 million pounds to the Scottish economy in 2015 and is projected to contribute 158 million by 2025. So for businesses, like I mentioned, attracting even just 1% of EU markets could create 90 million pounds of economic benefit for the south of Scotland. We also find that cyclists travel year round. Uh, it's an activity that isn't too reliant on the seasons. Um, it also creates increased footfall to businesses, both from local communities and from visitors. Uh, it also helps with community building and a sense of place. So businesses that welcome cyclists might find that a lot of their close neighbours, uh, towns nearby, people will get on their bikes to pay you a visit on, on a nice day um, and it find it easier to reach you than having to take the car, finding a, a space to park. Um, 
and all of that. And of course, there are health and well-being benefits associated with it. Then, over the past year, we have been part with the local councils, SUSPANS, Visit Scotland, and many key partners to develop the regional cycling strategy. The regional cycling strategy uh, sees the SSDA and its partners um, taking a key role in um, looking at how cycling can help us with six key themes, destination development and promotion, events, infrastructure, sustainable economy and communities, sports, recreation and well-being, and also innovation and technology. The main goal is to make cycling an inclusive, inclusive and accessible transport option for everyone living, working and visiting the region. In terms of destination development and promotion, the role of SSDA is to utilize growth opportunities for the visitor economy that cycling can bring. That is through a variety of items. So for events, we're looking to attract and support a year round calendar of events. Last year, we had the absolutely massive UCI uh, Cycling World Championships, but we also have all of the local events around cycling, like Street Love over in uh, People's and in Elysian. We've got Raiders Gravel Galloway and um, quite a few local smaller events as well. In terms of infrastructure, we're also looking to support the strengthening of the cycling hub status that we achieved at the end of last year. So we're now officially a UCI designated bike region. And of course, we want to support you as businesses in new product development and diversifying to attract this new market. If you haven't read up the full strategy yet, I would definitely encourage you to do that. We'll send out the link after our webinar today. Now, what do we already offer to cyclists in the South of Scotland? What's the state of play? We actually have quite a lot on offer already. So there are nine areas uh, in relation to cycling that I want to give you a quick introduction to. So at the moment, we offer opportunities for mountain biking, road cycling, gravel biking, events, we've got cycle friendly communities, long distance routes, active travel routes to suit every ability, of course the national cycle network and we already have absolutely fantastic tour providers in the region as well. Starting out with mountain biking, you might already know about the seven stain sites that we have, five of in the and Galloway, two in the Scottish borders, but we also have really great independent trail centres and networks around Drumlanrig Castle Estate over in Dumfries and Galloway, yeah, and Clayton Forest and Caverson Forest with famous trails like the Golfie around the Tweed Valley and of course the Tweed Valley Trail Association that independently looks after and develops quite a few trails as well. So wherever you're based in the south of Scotland, you might actually find that some of these mountain biking centres are not too far away from you and that people staying with you or visiting you um, might be planning to stop there as well and have a day out on their bikes. In terms of road cycling, we've got fantastic amenities for that throughout the region. South of Scotland is already known for quiet roads. Uh, feedback that we've had from road cyclists is that you're never far from towns and local amenities. We have signposted routes throughout the area, a combination of climbs and views to see different abilities. Uh, we have a variety of riding events and established cycling clubs and networks. Gravel biking itself is fast growing popularity and we're finding that it's a very high spending demographic that really enjoys um, enjoys taking part in this. The Galloway Forest Park, that areas around Glentrull are already really popular choices for this activity. The Tweed Valley, whether you're starting at Padrona or riding all the way to Selkirk, uh, also has some recommended routes already. And the Southern Upland Way is also a popular choice for gravel cyclists. In terms of events in the region, we've got a whole lot. I couldn't even fit them all on this slide, so please forgive me if I've missed out on one that happens in your area. We've got the Euro World Series, we've got um, Dalbiti Rocks and Wheels for mountain biking, we have Muck and Mac and the Greloch that I've already mentioned for gravel biking. For road cycling, we've for many years had the Tour of the Borders, um, the Cross Border School Teeth. Tweed Love attracts cyclists of all ages and abilities, and we've also welcomed major events like the Tour of Britain, 
So, and all of these events come back year after year because we already have so many locals and also visitors coming in to enjoy this offering. We're also really lucky to have a number of cycling friendly communities, starting off with Newcastleton, who are already well established as a bike friendly village. They have a bike friendly bunk house. Many of their businesses welcome cyclists. They also have the seven stains Newcastleton nearby. Um, and just provide really good information for everyone stopping by. Gatehouse of Fleet is now home to major cycling events down to Gwellock and Radius Gravel, and the local community have really adopted this and get involved in the running of these events every year. Of course, Inner Leithen and Peebles are already really popular in the mountain biking community and for cyclists generally, but it's also the site of the new mountain biking development centre that's being supported by SOCI. So we will see this growing year on year. And of course, we should also give a shout out to Hoyk, which has the oldest cycling club in Scotland and the many, many towns that have really fantastic cycling clubs right across the beach. In terms of the long distance routes, you might already be familiar with the traffic to see uh, over in the borders. We also have the border loop, the borders Abbey's Way. We have the Southern Upland Way that's now also being used by cyclists, Romans and Rebus route and a number of routes that are passing through the region, like the Coast and Castles route that is taking quite a few visitors over to Kelso, and the Raiders Road that starts up in Midlothian to pass through the borders. In terms of active travel routes, um, those are really fantastically being developed right at the moment. Lastly, we saw the opening of the Edelston Path, we've got um, the Reston Railway link, and we've got a new active travel route around Thornhill. And these are really suitable for all ages, so really introducing families and younger kids to, to cycling in the region as well without having to worry um, too much about some of the busier roads. We also have really popular multi-access routes such as the Tweed Valley Railway Path, Borders Abbey's Way, which I've already mentioned, and the Sprouston Railway Route. And over 100 cycle routes already listed on Scotland Starts here for a variety of abilities that we always recommend people check out. For the national cycle networks, we've got 1,643 miles across Scotland, but four of the routes, the Sustrans routes 1, 7, 73 and 753 actually pass through the south of Scotland. And there are options to link up with routes um, both in Ayrshire, in the Lothians and also in the north of England to uh, attract cyclists who are outside the region to come into the region, travel through and link up with some of our existing routes. We also have absolutely fantastic, extensive local expertise and knowledge. We have a variety of tour guides and training opportunities available. Um, I believe we all we even have some of them on the webinar today. So from go where to trail skills to Galloway cycling holidays and ride lines. Um, we've already seen a lot of them collaborate with local accommodation providers and businesses giving recommendations and just offering support for businesses to develop their own expertise. We've also had seen community hubs expanding from a bike hire, bike focus cafes, accommodation providers, and, more, and of course, businesses acting as information points. So as I mentioned, wherever you are based with your business in the south of Scotland, you might find that there are cycling opportunities quite close to you, more easy opportunities to attract and link in with the existing offering. And now we've got Gowan taking a closer look at how businesses have already attracted the site of the Thanks, Vanessa. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm looking at some of the names that are on the webinar today. There's a lot of very experienced cyclists or people already involved in cycling, but this, uh, which is great. But we were also wanted to give people who are perhaps not so familiar with the cycling market to the cycling uh, community, a, a little bit of an overview. Um, sorry, I'm trying to control the side, Vanessa. Can you move it on? Sorry, I thought I'd. There you go. So even just how to spot a cyclist that that well the, the old joke how do you tell if somebody's a road cyclist they'll tell you each area of cycling has its own derogatory jokes about that but those time lines unusual calf muscles shaved legs of the men that's always a good giveaway because they want extra speed so always with a, an expensive watch recording every move that they make sticky gel packets and they love cake which is really great for our cafes and communities 
there's no point going cycling unless you're eating cake, <laughs> I'm afraid to say. So where are the cyclists really within that market? So location for us is key. Um, we have a huge potential with the central belt of Scotland, but also um, from sort of Derbyshire up, also people coming into the area. Those are people coming on day visits. They're perhaps coming on a specific cycling holiday. So those already popular routes and which we will hope will, what the Kirkpatrick Coast to Coast will be one of those. Um, quite often those are guided or they have luggage transfer and other bits of infrastructure around how you get back to your, your car, or your accommodation. So those are areas that we're really keen to talk to people about development. Uh, there are existing luggage transfer for walking, but there's not really that infrastructure for cycling because sometimes it may involve carrying a bike as well. So if anybody's got any knowledge on that or any as key potentially looking to develop that, we're, we're really keen to talk to you or hear from you. Cycling holiday, uh, holidays, cycling, should I say, sorry. So people who are already here and they might want to do a bit of cycling as a part of that holiday. It's not the main driver, but there are a lot of those. And that's families, um, perhaps people deciding that with EB bike hire in the region, that it's something that they'll take up again. They maybe haven't cycled for many years, but e-bikes give so many people so many diff new opportunities. And of course, locals. There's lots and lots of great cycling clubs. Um, we have some a speaker here today from one of them, and they like to explore. They don't always want to ride the same roads, so they might be coming over to you. So don't dismiss that local market. It's really important as well. Age bracket, everybody hopefully cycles. Uh, that's, it's Vanessa touched on, it's more environmentally friendly. It's fit health and well-being, mental health. It's really important. However, the majority of that market is that sort of 40 to 49. That market is going to come to us for holidays they've got time they've got disposable cash so that's the sort of age bracket you're marketing at there's a lot of drop off after uh, children learn to ride that's the second biggest market but then it drops off as we all get busy and you know, find a car etc um but yes so getting healthier that's another reason for people taking it up perhaps uh they've the children are a bit gro more grown and they want to get back out in the fresh air. And also they're learning to cycle with the children. So that family market, again, is, is a really key one. Different levels of abilities. Um, so there's those people that want to feel completely safe. They, they don't feel confident in traffic. So there's that safe off-road facility. We have some great cycle networks. However, they are, a lot of them, on uh, roads that are open to traffic. Um, so we have... An, more and more development around cycle specific or, or shared space trails which is great uh, family friendly again those those really safe off-road uh, options whether that's forest track or a, a designated cycleway there's the more adventurous that perhaps want to explore the the mountain bikers the gravel bikers and the road cyclists that want to do that bit more distance or they've heard about the terrific ride up from bonchester over to hoik that sort of uh they want the tick, the tick in the box. They want it on Strava, which is a recording device. If you're not uh, familiar with Strava, because if it's not on Strava, it hasn't happened for a lot of road cyclists. And then there's the multi-day, which is, again, a market we're really looking to expand on with the launch of the Kirkpatrick Coast to Coast, but also the other routes that Vanessa has mentioned in the area. And again, that comes back to that infrastructure of having luggage transfer um, and lots of different things that businesses can do to accommodate, which we'll get onto. Time, um, cycling takes time or you want to take the time to go cycling. So there are different life challenges with that. So if you've got a young family, you maybe haven't got the same availability or, or you, you're going cycling with your family. So the time is uh, very precious. And so it can be shorter loops. So you're coming back to your your, your destination of where you set off and it's safe for younger riders as well. There are the sports uh, side of things, so people who want to compete, and there's lots of triathlons that happen in the area, lots of cycling sportifs. So they are a really key holiday market because if we encourage them to come for these events to compete, but also to stay for a few days either side, would be great. There's the challenge. Um, that obviously is a big chunk of time, and that's where that, that older age group comes in because they do have a bit more um, time rich, potentially. And if they're going to ride for a couple of days or even a, a week or so, um, that's the sort of market there. And then there's the relaxation. So people who just like to get out in the fresh air on their bike and appreciate the countryside.
uh, last one, Seasons. Uh, Liz rightly mentioned briefly in our, our previous meeting on our winter seasonal landing page, there's no imagery of cycling and cycling is year round, uh, especially for the road cyclists, winter miles, summer smiles. Uh, there's the hardy off-roaders, the mountain bikers who are out in all weathers. And then there is the really fair weather cyclists, which I've turned into a bit of one. So they don't come out unless it's above 10 degrees and there's no headwind and it's a bit sunny. So you're looking at that summer and uh, spring autumn period. And then there's the posty, as we used to call them. They're out in all weathers, always in shorts, whether it's sub-zero or boiling hot. So you've got a really, really wide range is what this slide is trying to demonstrate of potential visitors, guests that you can attract. So if you you can decide which sort of market you're going for, is it a more general cycling? So there's lots and lots of different opportunities and there's different places you can look for those visitors and guests and market to as well. So we've pulled together a couple of case studies. Um, as with the events, we haven't covered everybody. But there are lots more out these there. These are just ones that we're we're very aware of. Um, so the first one is actually from outside the reason, region, which is Rosie Baxendine. She actually she, she does come down here quite a lot. Um, you know, transparency. She's a friend of mine, and that's how you know I've come to highlight her in this case study. So she started bike packing back in twenty sixteen, and she. Uh, with another friend of mine, rode from Edinburgh to Manchester, which is the second city divide route gravel biking in festive fancy dress with fairy lights for Christmas, because that's what you do. Um, but it was fantastic. And she, they were absolutely blown away by the borders and they, they camped just near Hermitage Castle, which they found quite atmospheric. I think um, we've slept in cow sheds and all sorts. But yeah, she's she's done some fantastic work from that that sort of experience she's built a business she's been named one of the top 100 women in cycling she's a guide she's a cycle trainer and she works a lot with the Co adaptive riders collective to highlight the adventure is for everybody and paul the chap that runs that he uh, is a recumbent bike user he's a wheelchair user and they go on all sorts of crazy mad adventures all over the countryside she also runs a self-catering as well there um, but she says on our website, she's not destination focused. It's about taking your time and living in the moment. So her top tips are secure bike storage and cleaning facilities. This is what she looks for when she's going to places. Um, local knowledge of the best cycle friendly cafes and bike shops. So you can beef up your own knowledge. Easy to follow routes. That's a, a good one. And if nobody knows what GPX files are, we can include that in a toolkit. We can we can tell you about that. It's basically an electronic file that cyclists follow our walkers. Simple solutions, local knowledge is key. Get to know the, where the quiet picnic spots are or sheltered routes so you can guide your guests or your visitors to those. You don't need a massive encyclopedic knowledge of them. If you just know a couple, it, it just helps enhance that experience and people know that you care a little bit. A lo local history, but I think we're all very good at that. We're all very proud of our region. We know what's all going on around there, so that's good. So what has resulted from her experience, she now does bike packing tours and guided trips. She um, runs gravel rides and gravel events, um, and she regularly has women only events and holidays, which she takes out, which are very popular. And she also, as I say, she works with the Adaptive Collective and they go on all ability adventures and they've just done a little film on it up in the Highlands where they were um, staying at Bothy's. So yeah, that's just an example from someone else that works in the region, but also goes, uh, she's based up in Perthshire. One locally, uh, the ship in the Gatehouse of Fleet, for those of you who don't know, it's a beautiful little hotel up in Gatehouse, boutique hotel, um, and they cater for a really wide range of guests from cyclists, walkers, dog walkers, you know, they, uh, they embrace everybody. Um, so they have really pulled the stops out to elevate the customers of it experience there for cyclists so they've just upgraded to a really um, new large secure bike storage which is fantastic um, and they work with other local businesses as Vanessa mentioned Gatehouse of Fleet is a cycling hub um, there's a lot of work going on there um, development wise there's the, the events that are coming in but even just locally for the community so they've got this community social enterprise wheels of fleet so it's a repair and maintenance service 
and they ensure all the bikes guests are maintained and repaired and you can book in with them so it's just a nice easy upgrade for them as a business um adding value doesn't have to cost such as the example there they promote lots of local opportunities what events are going on guided rides and they collaborate as much as possible um simple solutions they've got a drying room for kit um it, it doesn't need to be specialist it can be just somewhere that's a bit warm uh, so your guests are dry when they go out the next day a bike wash again it doesn't need to be very fancy it can just be a bucket and a sponge but just having something there secure lockups are however really key um people spend a lot of money on their bikes and some of them are very emotionally attached to them so they want to know that they're safe of, a, of an evening or during the day and pack lunches for riders so if they're going out for the day, you can order those in advance. Results, happy customers. That's what we all want. They have, and crucially, repeat business and year round occupancy, which is fantastic from just some really simple changes. Uh, Hike and Bike Hub. George is on the call today, waves. Um, so I sent this last thing, first thing this morning. So hopefully it's all up to date. George will please do up. Uh, interject if I've not got anything entirely right. So Angela and George started the Hike and Bike Hub in Gala uh, 2022 to promote active travel, healthy leisure activities, and they make their services on a pay-what-you-can basis. So it is a social enterprise with an emphasis. Uh, the, the, the social side of it is um, autism awareness. They offer information about, it's a, it's a great information hub. It's not just a, a shop and a, a bike repair. They've got lots and lots of booklets about walks and rides, um, local health events that are going on and the lead health walks as well, which are really popular. E-bike hire, they've got, you've got a couple of adaptive bikes, I believe. And yeah, just generally a warm chat, a warm welcome and a chat for anybody who wants to pop in, uh, including dogs. Quite often going myself with the dog, he likes going in for a fuss. Uh, and they now also organise and run the Gala Shields Walking Festival in spring and autumn which is a very welcome addition to the town. So yeah, shout about your product and engage with the community. That's something that Hike and Bike Hub has done really, really well. And if you're not sure how to support diversity and workforce, talk to organisations like Hike and Bike. There are so many opportunities out there for everybody. Start small, test products, see what works. If it doesn't move on to the next thing, it doesn't have to be a huge investment of cost then. Embrace all the community. Simple adaptions can enable more people to experience the outdoors. And that's the outdoors really should be accessible to everybody. So results, adaptive cycle hire, guided rides and walks and pay what you can services. And another accommodation. So this is a borders based one this time for anybody that doesn't know it. The Tontine sits in Peebles. Um, I didn't actually put that. I said Tweed Valley, but it's, it's based in Peebles. It's on the high street. It's right in the heart of people's uh it's a very famous hotel if you're interested in, about the history of it go onto the website they've got some fantastic information about how it was built the hotel team are all really well briefed on cycling and routes again they, they don't have an encyclopedic knowledge but they do know some really great places that you can go locally and some of the low level easy access rides as well they collaborate with a local bike hire shop so if guests turn up who perhaps hadn't planned on cycling they have that knowledge and they can point guests in the direction of that cycle hire. As they say, customer service satisfaction is at the core of everything we do. We take great pride in, pride in providing warm hospitality and locally sourced produce. So they're talking a bit about their food there as well, because long, hard day of cycling, who doesn't like a good feed at the end of it? Know your market. Collaboration again. You'll notice a the theme, all of these, it's all about collaboration and great product knowledge. Simple solutions, again, they have a secure bike storage, bike drying room, and they have bike washes again. These are sort of three really key things. Um, and they also have maintenance racks for bikes. It's just, it's quite a simple piece of kit. In fact, you can buy um, versions on at Aldi and the, uh, they quite often have them in their big cycling events. That's another top tip if you're a uh, business trying to accommodate cyclists and you want to get a few bits and pieces. Aldi is great. Keep an eye out for their cycling events. Uh, the results, reputation for quality, high customer service and great community engagement. The community really uh, pays back by the use of the hotel themselves, which is key, especially in the quieter months. So, Frothy Bike Company, uh, fantastic 
cafe in Dumfries where I'm going for coffee tomorrow. Um, right on the White Sands in the heart of Dumfries. So Ross uh, is a Dunhamer originally and he left and went and did some fantastic stuff around the world, became a mechanic for some of the, the top teams um, and also fell in love with coffee, working in France for a long time. So he's brought that back to Dumfries. Uh, he's passionate about the region and his bikes and his coffee. So you're in for a treat if you go to the, the frothy bike. Also, he works with loads of great local suppliers, so really good food offering. So the shop is a destination. It's not just somewhere to go and get your bike serviced or to buy a bike. or It's a, you know, it's a whole experience. So, yeah, he's very good at sharing his passion and telling the story. Uh, it collaborates again with lots of local supplier and tries to upgrade by adding value to everyone's experience. You can design your own breakfast when you go in, so you can have porridge with whatever toppings. So it's just little things like that he's done that are really good. Um, Customise where you can, and that's, that feeds into that. The bikes and the food side of things, telling his story well, and great products that people love. He's obviously worked very high up the industry, so he knows the great, robust products. Customer loyalty, bringing life back to a town centre and supporting other local businesses is really, really key, especially in an area like Dumfries, where... Well, like a lot of towns, um, has got quieter, but it's starting to come back to life. So he's doing a great job there. And last but not least, Estill Muir Hub and Cafe. For those who don't know Estill Muir, it's right up above Langham. They are quite a remote community, but they are a passionate community. And it's well worth a visit up there. It's beautiful scenery. They have the Sammy Ling Monastery on their doorstep as well. The hub was the primary school. The community have uh, turned it around since 2004. It's now a really, really busy community space. They've got great plans to expand. They're looking at accommodation. They're looking at lots and lots of different things. And they want, they do hold some events, but they want to host more cycling events because um, they're in such a spectacular part of the world. Uh, they've upgraded the bike sheds again, offering secure storage, but also really get brilliant is e-bike charging because you're way out in remote wilds. You don't want to, to run out of charge. So they've thought of that and they've put these really simple chargers in. So you can have a coffee and a chat and warm up a little bit and then charge your e-bike and you're off again, which is great. Um, so, yeah, lots of plans to expand. Watch this space. Again, they're very good at telling their, their story. They're off the main route, but they're... They're now, with the uh, inception of the hub, they're absolutely not isolated. It is a destination for people. And they're very good at planning ahead and knowing what markets they're going to target. A warm welcome goes a long way, definitely. Certainly up there, um, very, very welcome community. Get to know the area. So again, they've gone out, they've learned about the routes, they, they've they've scoped some route, new routes out and they have, they've produced some little booklets there. Um, the nature and the heritage, obviously, they have got absolutely tons of that up there. So it's the the passionate about telling the story of what people can see when they're out and about in their bike, which all adds to the experience. Uh, they're a growing business and they have great plans to keep growing. Um, and they, they bring prosperity to the community. Um, so it's not just to themselves. It's a shared wealth. And they are, again, supporting other local businesses, which is great. Thank you so much, Gowan. Um so hopefully you've already uh, now have a bit of an insight into what the south of Scotland offers and why the cycling market is such an important one for, for us to grow. But nothing better than hearing it from some of the people on the ground. So we're really excited to have guest speakers with us today. So first one up, we have Billy from the Glentree Hive. Thank you so much for joining us today and I'll hand over to you. Hi, everyone. Um, so yeah, I'll just give you a, a, a quick sort of a very brief history of uh, Glentrill and Burgrenning Community Trust um, and their community enterprise project, the Glentrill Hive. Um, so in 2010, the local authority decided to close Glentrill Primary School, um, central to the village um, and community of about 60 people, um, basically due to lack of pupil numbers. Um, the Glentrill and Burgrenning Community Trust secured a community asset transfer for one pound and uh, for a number of years operated this building as a community centre, hosting workshops, special interest groups, youth groups, um, and we had also had an art gallery and craft shop. Um, in 2019, after extensive fundraising efforts, they were able to progress to the second stage of their project with um, a full renovation of the building. Um, and reopened in the summer of 2022. Um, 
with the installation of myself as project manager, we have since then worked tirelessly to promote and facilitate the many natural assets that exist in our corner of the Galloway Forest. Um, obviously, one of the most important offerings that we have here is the Glen Trail Seven Stains mountain bike trails. Um, it features a, a green and blue graded trails um, and is also the starting point for the 36 mile off-road trail uh, into the Galloway Forest itself um, called the Big Country Loop. Um, in addition, we're also on route uh, of the National Cycle Route 7 as part of the C2C trail. Um, so given our unique location um, and uh, the already established cycling opportunities surrounding us, we've set ourselves the task this year of reinforcing our position as the primary tourist facility in our area um, of the Galloway Forest Park. Um, so last year, um, in line with that last year, uh, we launched our first annual Glen Troll Hive Bike Festival, um, working with students um, at DG College to create our branding and logo for the festival. We hosted a two-day event, um, collaborating with local cycle-based organizations and small businesses to promote the provision of facilities um, for visiting cyclists. Um, those included were um, Paul Osborne from the Biking Explorers and Barry from Biosphere Bikes, but both of them are sort of uh, more Southern Ayrshire based. Um, not too far over the border though. Um, Jane Yvette, who runs uh, Glen Trail Cycle Works within the village, which is incredibly handy. Um, Esther Tack from Galloway and Southern Ayrshire Biosphere and Tom Henry from the Southern Upland Way joined us as well. And um, Gavin McCallum from the Galloway Hillbillies, they all participated and contributed to the weekend. Um, as this was, as that was our, our first year, um, rather than sort of taking on the liability and responsibility of, of mapping and stewarding the cycle routes throughout the forest, we opted to encourage the use simply of the nearby Glen Trail Seven Stains uh, mountain bike trails. Um, so with the approval and cooperation of Forestry Land Scotland, um, we were able to offer Bikes for Hire, which um, Anne from Biosphere Bikes kindly donated a couple of electric bikes as well. Um, we were able to offer the Bikes for Hire um, and, and simply just provided maps of the trails um, with the aim that we would um, promote what, what we feel is a drastically underpromoted network of trails in our area. Um, so we hosted during that weekend as well, we hosted a large group, you can see the, the picture there, a large group of tourists um, in collaboration with uh, biking explorers um, and Biosphere Bikes. Um, they'd created a bespoke cycle route throughout the Galloway Forest and up to Loch Trail and Bruce's Stone. And um, there were actually a group of Americans that were staying at, um, I think it's Clocking Castle um, nearby. So they, they were here for sort of the historical and cultural aspects that we could offer. and. Um, Paul took them on a, as I say, bespoke little tour around, around all the points that were relevant. Um, and of course, returning to our facility for much needed cake, as Gowan pointed out. <laughs> um, we're again planning our festival for this summer. Um, we're yet to nail down some dates. We're, we're um, checking in with, with all the other sort of special interest groups. They do also run a lot of um, events through the summer. So we don't really want to clash with them. We want to encourage and promote um, sort of spaced out events. Um, we're reducing the event down to a one day festival this year. Um, but again, hopefully working with Forestry Land Scotland to promote their Seven Stains trails. Um, and, and that's including Glen Trail and Carochtry because they, they can both be, be linked um, through the trails through the forest. Um, we will be encouraging of all local cyclist based businesses um, to participate and help us grow the visibility as Glen Trail is a key stop for cyclists. Um, we have a number of um, small small businesses, bike, mainly bike repair and bike shops within the area. <clears throat> and we're, we're more than happy to, to facilitate um, space for them to, to come and promote their business as well. We offer, um, a free page on our website for, for any local cycling business in the area. Um, so we're, we're really keen to, to work together with everyone to basically to, to benefit everyone. Um, in addition to that, we're, we're also planning to increase our offering here at the Hive. Um, so as Gavin says, with, with uh, new secure bike storage, 
Um, we, we currently only have space next to our self-catering accommodation, which can hold about three bikes, but we're, we're looking to get something a bit bigger that can host about 12. Um, a repair and wash station, um, drying facilities and dedicated interpretation boards and information points close by. <clears throat> um, so this year, hopefully our aim is um, to incorporate cycling in, in the area into the, the larger picture of tourist provision. Um, whilst indeed there are dedicated cyclists who seek to stay in the area to explore everything bike related that we have to offer in this area, um, we want to encourage the wider family unit to visit. So discover um, the brilliant sort of local restaurants, the, the walks and the hikes in the area, even discovering something new like wild swimming or forest bathing or um, even wild foraging. Um, and of course the dark skies um, so essentially we're, we're trying to create um, a year round destination that everyone can benefit from and, and we're really encouraging of other local businesses joining up with us, creating some links, um, as I say, advertising on our own website as well to, to help promote um, everyone in the area. Um, we are all very much spaced out um, in our location, but I think if, if we pull together and host a few um, events like the bike festival um we can really sort of showcase the area and everything that there is to to offer thank you so much billy i think it's absolutely fantastic to see that one we've got great new event addition to the area that really celebrates the whole community and so many different organizations coming together and it also does go back to what gown was talking about in terms of how important collaboration is in reaching the, the cycling market it's the community coming together, it's organisations like the Biosphere, the councils, ourselves, supporting where we can, and we're absolutely keen to do that. Um, and to also see how wonderfully the event has been embraced. So I look forward to seeing uh, the plans for this year, and hopefully, um, you know, you're going to grow over the next few years to attract many, many more visitors. Thank you so much. Our next guest speaker is Josh who also runs Southwest Scotland Cycle Training. Thank you so much for joining us today, Josh. Um, Josh is also known for being the first person to uh, cycle the Kirkpatrick C2C, setting the fastest known time. Um, Josh, um, please feel free to share your screen and share your presentation with us. Brilliant. Hopefully um, everyone uh, can hear me uh, and you can see my screen okay. Someone please shout at me if not. Um, yeah, so I'm Josh. Thank you very much for, for having me here today. Um, I, I live in Dumfries and I run um, Southwest Scotland Cycle Training. Um, and I'm an in, uh, independent business, but I get contracted by uh, a lot of cycling charities, so people like Cycling UK, Sustrans, and Cycling Scotland to run training courses for individuals and groups. The idea being trying to encourage anyone anywhere to cycle more as part of their day to day life. So the sorts of courses I offer might be an individual who lacks a bit of confidence, maybe on roads and wants, wants some sessions to help them, them feel more empowered to do that. Or maybe um, a course to train people to take groups out on lead rides, so a cycle ride leader course. That's sort of thing. And I'm also very passionate about road safety. So I do a lot of work with drivers and learner drivers around uh, responsibilities around sharing space with um, more vulnerable road users. So um, the start of my presentation here, I've actually got a few bits of slides talking about why ride in D&G. Gawain, I think, covered this really comprehensively, um, so I'm not going not gonna to repeat what, uh, what uh, the, the, the words that she had, but I, I think this is perhaps something that does add a little bit of um, a really nice visual image about why cycling in Dumfries and Galloway, particularly from a road cycling perspective, is so appealing to people. This is just an image from Google Maps. You can see the uh, you see Dumfries is in the bottom right hand corner there. Every blue line on this map is road. Now, pretty much, unless it's one of the you know A seventy five, A seventy six, A seven one zero, nearly all of these roads, particularly in this kind of anything east of Dumfries, basically, is beautiful to ride really quiet, very low traffic, stunning scenery. Now, the next slide, 
this is basically the whole of the north of Scotland, moving from, you know, kind of north of, of Inverness, basically. And what we have, yeah, beautiful roads up there, but there's not very many of them. And this route encompasses a very famous driving and cycling route, the North Coast 500, which actually is very busy with traffic. So my experiences of riding in, in that part of Scotland, although beautiful, you're sharing that space a lot with, with other road users, maybe large uh, camper vans, things like that, which isn't the most pleasant cycling experience for a lot of people. And particularly when we know that one of the big barriers for people cycling more day to day is around a fear of sharing space with traffic. When we look at our road network that we have, this massive road network that's very quiet, that's one of the huge, huge selling points of, of Dumfries and Galway. Particularly if you compare it again with other places like the Lake District, where you're competing with huge volumes of tourist traffic on, on often very small roads. Um, again, uh, what Gowan's mentioned about the importance of, of, of the UCI event coming, and I don't know if any of you actually watched the TV coverage of the events that were happening from, from Dumfries and Galloway, but it looked fantastic. It looked like such a great region to come to. So hopefully that's going to have, have an impact on, on people coming to, to enjoy the region. So the rest of my presentation, um, I've spoken about how a lot of the work I do is around breaking down barriers to people, feeling they can cycle more day to day. Um, but what I've also done um, is a lot of work with businesses and a lot of consultation around how they can kind of be more cycling friendly. So. I've not got enough time to go hugely in depth into all of these points, but I'll kind of do a bit of a whistle stop tour. And if anyone's got any questions for me following today's presentation, please do just just get in touch. Uh, I'll, I'll leave my phone number and email. I'm very happy to have a chat in more depth about some of these ideas. So from an accommodation perspective, how do we appeal to people on bikes? So it was already mentioned by uh, one of the case studies that we saw earlier, but really simple. Where do we store a bike? Um, it needs to be somewhere secure, not just you know somewhere they can lock a bike up to, but it needs to actually be something secure. We know our region is really low crime, particularly in some of our more more urban, uh, more rural areas. But does someone who's visiting from you know uh, Manchester, Glasgow, London, do they feel quite the same way about leaving a bike perhaps somewhere not as secure as they would where where they live? So we need to provide that secure, covered accommodate. Uh, 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 storage for people's bikes. Again, it was that mentioned that ability to maybe clean a bike, um, appreciate that that might not be possible, but then a backup for that could be maybe just even simple things like providing um, some lubricating oil and some old rags so that people can wipe down and clean their chain, not necessarily having to kind of wash the whole bike down, but they can do basics like that. Um, provision of a pump if someone gets a puncture they're likely to want to be able to pump their tire back up properly using a larger kind of track pump so they can cost you know, 10 pounds and it could be really handy for you to have as well um most riders won't be who are doing long tours won't be carrying substantial locks with them as well so again that ties into the uh, storage for their bikes as well where it has to be secure it's too heavy to carry a big proper insurance standard lock a lot of the time for people um, what about washing and drying of clothes? When I've done cycle touring, um, if I arrive somewhere and someone offers to, to, to wash and dry your clothes, usually at a cost, which is, is fine. Um, I often take that up because you don't know, you know, you're in the same kit a lot of the time, you end up smelling a little bit and chance to chance to get your clothes washed as a, an offering really, really useful. And again, kit drying, if nothing else, that would be really helpful, you know, wet shoes, things like that. Um, from your own perspective um, as an accommodation provider, you might be concerned about um, dirty items. You know, if people are carrying pannier bags with them, uh, where are they going to put them in the room? Are they going to get the room all messy and dirty on the carpet? Simple provision of a little like, rubber mat for people to put those things on gives you then that piece of mind. Um, some of what I've just mentioned there assumes that maybe people are touring through the region, passing through, doing one of the longer distance cycling routes like the Kirkpatrick Coast to Coast. But another type of tourist might wish to use you as an actual base um, and stay with you for a few days. So they may want advice on route planning, um, nice places to go. Again, that was touched on before in, in one of the case studies that Gowan, Gowan mentioned. Maybe your guests aren't sure about some of the roads. Is this an okay one to ride? How busy is that? So for you, having that local knowledge is really helpful in giving that advice. 
especially if they're international tourists as well. Um, one of the main things, it's very easy to be able to give advice on the small number of roads to avoid in Dumfries and Galloway. The rest is a big open goal. If you don't cycle yourself, then there's lots of, of businesses, myself being one of them, who will offer support and advice and guidance in helping you with, with route planning for your guests. Um, this here is a picture of um, a route map of some cycle tours available from Inner Leithen. This is from the, uh, the Borders Council website. Each of the towns in the Borders has their own uh, map, very similar to this with suggested routes. It's fantastic. Um, this is something that you could maybe look to do from your own um, accommodation um, or your own premises. Doesn't have to be as snazzy as this, a printed map. These could just be online routes that you create that sit on the website. Again, very easy to do, lots of free route planning software. And if that's something you want help with, again, I'm sure there's a range of businesses. Again, I'm happy to do this with you uh, to help you suggest routes for, for your guests. Um, okay. Um, something that you might look to do as well, um, that I know some businesses quite like to do, is offering rides from the accommodation maybe tying up with a local tour provider. Um, again, there's, there's several of them in the borders, several of them that have been mentioned in, in Dumfries and Galloway, who maybe you could do a partnership with, that offering those guests, again, particularly if they're new to the region, actually a guided tour, maybe tying into that local history, tapping into the best cafes, all those sorts of things that really enhance that experience. Um, if that was something you're wanting to do yourself, you could train as a cycle ride leader. Um, that's uh, something those courses run regularly through Cycling Scotland and again gives you the ability to then offer that and enhance your own offering for the people who are riding bikes. Something to consider again if we're thinking about this green tourism which is super super important for myself and we know that a lot more tourists are considering um, that, that green impact is how are they traveling to you? Maybe they don't want to drive to you to then use as a base so having that knowledge about how to get to you we're quite lucky in, in Dumfries and Galloway and in the borders that most of the trains, I know there's very limited to train services, but most of them don't, in fact, all of them don't require a bike booking to get your bike on the train, which is quite unusual. Some of the uh, more popular tourism destinations in Scotland, it can be quite difficult to get your bike there with bookings and things like that. Dumfries and Galloway and the borders, really pretty straightforward. But what about, for example, if we're, an accommodation provider not based near Stranra train station or Dumfries train station. How do people get in between? There is a bus option, the 500 bus will take bikes, but it depends on the bus. You, if it's a coach bus, they'll take a bike, but they might not take a bike if they're a low loader. So having this knowledge, knowing about how to link up with um, with uh, active travel or um, those, those uh, public transport options is really useful. Maybe something you could offer is collecting people from a transport hub tying in with a, a local um, transport provider to get people to your destination if they don't want to travel to the region by the car. Um, okay, what about food? So again, being mentioned um, that cyclists love their food. They often have big, big days. This is a place I love to go on my bike in the region, Mossburn Community Farm. There's one of their pigs enjoying their food, um, a very healthy food actually. Um, but yeah, cyclists do love food. Um, and as an accommodation provider, depending on where you are, if they've traveled to you by bike and aren't there by with a car, how can they then go out for an evening meal? So I stayed recently at a fantastic, really cycling friendly bed and breakfast in North Yorkshire that was about eight miles from the nearest town. And they have an offer that you can book evening meals to eat with them. They'll cook for you at cost, obviously. They'll, they'll they charge for that. Uh, but it's a great offering. For, for cycle tourists, if, if that's something you're able and happy to do. Uh, another thing that you might want to consider is you know, storing some flapjack in your freezer, some brownie, things like that, that are delicious, easy to cook, uh, can be made to suit most dietary requirements and they can live in your freezer. And if people want them, you, that's a, a, something you can offer for, to, to take out with them as a snack for the day. And again, no reason you can't charge for those if you want. What about cafes? So we've already talked again about cafes becoming maybe a destination point for people on bikes. Uh, Cycling UK run a, a competition for Cycling Cafe of the Year. So as a cafe or kind of restaurant, I suppose, how do we appeal to the people on bikes? Uh, people on bikes are really good customers because it's quick turnaround for people. 
Uh, often people come in, they don't stay for too long, take up too much table time, and then they're off again. Regular visitors often have set routines, um, maybe a quite early morning visitors at times when you're not that busy. So a great way, great kind of regular customers to have. Uh, there's a big cultural link between, uh, between cafes and, and some. Something that you can do to be more cycle friendly is providing locks, having free locks in your cafe for people on bikes to use. This has a benefit that people feel they can stop, particularly if there isn't somewhere obvious out the front that they can leave the bike to keep an eye on. It stops leaning the bike against your windows or paintwork. And also it can be a way of you asking people to leave their bikes where that maybe isn't blocking a pavement and causing access to the accessibility issues for other, other pavement users. Lots and lots of cafes I've seen around the country do this, just use a combination lock so that people don't lose the key, combination's easy to remember. Um, and yeah, that's a, a really great way for people, particularly if, if maybe it's a, a, a cafe without an open shop from the window. If you don't have um, cycle parking facilities, obviously, up front of your cafe, um, then maybe that could be a conversation with your council. There are funding applications you can apply for with various uh, different grants that you can apply for to tap into to put those provisions in place. Um, classic cycling stands, they're not very expensive uh, and relatively easy to use. Um, cafes can become, as we mentioned, real destination places for people to go to. There's a cafe in Glasgow that I go to regularly if I'm there that I know a lot of people cycle to. They go out their way on a cycle journey, riding through not a particularly pleasant bit of cycling to get to it, but because they're so cycling friendly, it becomes a destination point to go to. Um, and they've expanded then to tap into that by producing their own cycling merchandise, caps, jerseys, all sorts of different things, socks, um, and produce lots of kind of promotional videos around it as well. Um, so you can become a real destination point. Another example, this happened in Northumberland with a farm that I used to go to. I used to live in the northeast of England and uh, a chap who uh, had inherited a farm, he set up a little cafe, diversified his, his farming business, just in an outbuilding, set up a cafe, and that became very popular with cyclists. It just grew arms and legs. It became a destination place. He then uh, hired out the barn next door to be a yoga studio for the nearby town to come and use. Everyone that did the yoga then came to the cafe. A bike mechanic then set up in the next outhouse along from him, um, and it just grew arms and legs and has become this, this, this thing that's sustainable through cycling. Other things we can do is creating a welcoming atmosphere for people coming on bikes. So things like um, uh, offering to fill water bottles when people arrive, having a pump maybe for people to access. Um, Maybe you can run a cycling challenge from your cafe um, or a treasure hunt for families. Treasure hunts, really, I do a lot of these for different organizations developing these where it's based on what's local, often tapping into local history. Great way of encouraging families to come and visit your cafe. Um, and again, you have challenges. There's some cafes I know that set kind of route challenges for people to do, do the route and get a free coffee at the end, things like that. It's really imaginative stuff that you can do to appeal. And again, it's not just appealing to that, that kind of uh, let's go fast demographic. You're wanting to appeal to as wide an audience as possible, particularly that family market, or maybe people who, who don't class themselves as a cyclist. They just think, I'm going on a bike ride today. I'm not a cyclist, but I'm just going on a bike ride today. Where, where's welcome for me? Again, something you can offer as a, as a business is cycle training for your staff. Um, again, thinking about that green impact, maybe wanting to encourage healthy lifestyles for staff, reducing carbon emissions through workplace journeys. Um, this is something that Cycling Scotland offer is a range of different cycle confidence training sessions for staff for workplaces. Uh, and that's something you can do, as well, which again, ties into that being a kind of cycle. Um, I've offered uh, learn to ride sessions for children tying in with cafes before, uh, either next to a cafe or in part of their premises, and that's been very popular. As well. Finally, uh, as a tourist attraction, how do we appeal to people on bike? So one thing I'm coming across more and more is a green discount. So travel here by bike and get money off your entry. So good examples I can think of on this are the RSPB. The Wetlands Trust down at Calaverock. I came across it at the um, Royal Horticultural Society in Manchester. Again, a way of encouraging people to travel to us in a, in a green way and rewarding that. Providing locks, people passing through a region, particularly on a kind of A to B long distance route, 
might not be aware of some of the cool things that they're going to go past and might really want to come visit this distillery, this castle, this lighthouse, whatever it might be, but can't because they've not brought a heavy duty lock. So again, providing those enables people to actually go, oh, cool, we can stop here, brilliant. Um, and again, um, something that you may consider depending on your business is maybe providing uh, driver training, that driver awareness around vulnerable road users that makes your business appear um, cycling friendly as well. Um, I think that is everything from me. My contact details are on the end there if anyone would like them. I'll type them into the chat as well in case anyone doesn't manage to scroll these down in time. Uh, but yeah, if anyone wants to get in touch with me, I'm always, always very happy to chat by email or by phone. Thank you. Fabulous. Thank you so much, Josh. I think some really great points and also just getting that insight that there are some easy steps of dipping your toes into the cycling market, opportunities for diversifying your business. And um, actually a very good item that you mentioned that I just wanted to highlight as well is there is still funding available from SOCI at the moment. It's the um, Cycling Infrastructure Fund. So businesses looking to upgrade their offering and the infrastructure they have for cycling. So that could be secure bike storage. It could be um, quite a multitude of things. Uh, definitely check that out. We will include that in the roundup of the webinar. Um, there is um, guidelines on the SOCI website as well. So if as a business you're thinking about upgrading some of your facilities, that might be worth a look. Now we're coming to our next guest speaker and thank you so much for making time today. It's Laura from Kelso Breeze Rides. So another popular cycling hub, this time we're over in the borders. Um, I will probably stop sharing my screen and I will let Laura take over. Thank you so much. There you go. Hi. So thank you. Um, so I'm Laura and I'm based in Scottish Borders. I am a breeze ride leader through Scottish Cycling, which is an initiative that is launched through British Cycling and Scottish Cycling to get more women on bikes. There are loads of us around the country. Um, I'm the area coordinator for South East Scotland. I'm firstly going to apologise if my dog starts barking because he's just come running in. Um, and we basically get women out on the bikes. I recognise a couple of names there that are uh, ride leaders too and have trained in cycle coaching with me. George is um, from the hub in um, Gala. His uh, wife, Angela, as well, she is one of our ride leaders. Um, so she leads rides from the Gala side of it. Um, in the Scottish Borders, we've got seven branches of Breeze, which is pretty amazing. And there's lots of rides that we do. And we're actually looking at... Um, we're bringing an event in at the beginning of June to get all the areas. Um, it's, I think it's we're naming it the Big Borders Bike Bash and getting all the areas of breeze rides within the borders to, to lead rides and then meet in the middle the next day just to get people getting to know each other. There's a system called the Let's Ride where anybody that wants to go on a bike ride, these are generally women only rides, although there are guided rides which are led pretty similar by male or women and uh, ride leaders. And you can just put your postcode in, see if there's a ride available in the area you're staying and sign up and, and go pedaling. They are for all abilities, all ages. Um, there's no there's no thing stopping you really. It's it's just, it's a great initiative to get you out pedaling. We find in the borders that a lot of um, businesses are cycling such a massive thing. You know, you've touched on the, the Tour of Britain, um, the Tour of Border, all these events, the UCI, they've all come through Kelso. A lot of them, um, we've even got, we've got the Kelso 100, you've got the, the four abbeys, which are pretty famous routes that people come and they do. The Kirkpatrick Way, there was a breeze um, travelling teddy bear that rode it last year. Uh, it started and I mean, it took a little while to do because obviously bringing it in. So there's lots and lots of promotions to get women on the bikes and just encourage them. Um, yeah, and there's also like there's the Midsummer Breeze Sportive, which is a women only sportive. So it's just great to have all these opportunities and link in with, with different types of cycling throughout the region, really. Um, yeah. Fantastic. And I see uh, there was a message in the chat just now from Kims, who's a breeze leader over in Dumfries and Galloway. It's fantastic to see the connectivity and the connections and the enthusiasm. So Liz and I um, back, oh, probably 10 years ago, we actually did our 
uh, bike coaching or cycle to, I can't remember what it's called now, but we are both um, cycle coaches. Uh, we trained a long time ago together. Oh my word, that's yeah. so true. Hi. It is. Hello. Whoa. <laughs> long time no see. <laughs> yeah. There we go. And we came around to Breeze. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Cool. Yeah. Uh, Breeze is so excellent. Much. Thank you so much, Laura. Um, so I think it's really, really visible how fantastic the South of Scotland really is for cycling. We already have communities excited about cycling. We have the locals really involved and really embedded in it. And there is a lot of planning going on right now to make cycling um, really a key, key item for the destination. So a really, really big thank you um, to all of our speakers, to Laura, to Billy, to Josh. And what we would actually like to do now is to have a bit of a discussion with everybody um, and to look at what you are taking away from the webinar today. If you have any ideas, new contacts, people you want to reach out to. And you know, same for you, Billy, Laura and Josh. Please feel free to to share your impressions from today. There was a little bit of uh, chat going on during some of the presentations, which is great about uh, where to find cycle routes. And yeah, Denise, who is from Scottish Borders Council, they have uh, the, the routes that Josh mentioned. So those are route booklets, you can download them. They are available in hard copy. They're also available on the Scotland Starts Here website because the Council very kindly shared all the those route files with us. So yeah, they're a fantastic resource. And there's there's some similar route maps uh, with Dumfries and Galloway Council as well, which are also on our, our website. Yes. I think the takeaway for myself is really the collaboration that is already going on in the South of Scotland. And it's fantastic to see from you know, Billy from yourself, especially with the event planning, everything that's happening. Um, but I was also wondering, Laura, perhaps you want to shout out some of the other businesses in and around Kelso that have been that you've been involved with. Oh gosh, yes. I mean, there are loads. Um, the the biggest is, as everybody says, is the coffee stops. So there is a one on Roxburgh Street called Seasons. Uh, it's a small one, but they they keep as well as obviously the cycle shops. So in Melrose, you've got Hardy's Bikes. They supply to make sure that the coffee shop has plenty inner tubes plenty um they've got a trap pump everything available for you uh it's great you've got cafe you up the road as well they're all everybody is just great into cycling um there's a massive network called the visit kelso and all the links are on there um and we work in with um denise through the in fact i actually need to ask her for some more maps because they were they were saying we've run out um since we've recently relaunched um everything uh so it's it's just yeah lots of great support i mean people i say the four abbeys is is the iconic one that people come to and in the center and the coffee shops are just amazing wonderful to hear i think we're going to have to make a, a long list of the best uh cafe spots for cyclists to to stop by when when they travel to the south of scotland and then we'll we'll consult with laura josh and billy for <laughs> for input <laughs> on that <laughs> wonderful and we've got Mark on the call from Dumfries Tours. He's a cyclist. He knows a, good, a few good cafes. He's a cafe man as well. So <laughs> you can tap him as well. Wonderful. I think that might be a really good idea also to share uh, the, the details of the um of the attend of some of the attendees um from today who have mentioned that they are cyclists themselves, just to give people a bit of an opportunity to connect further and to see if maybe there is an opportunity there to collaborate, whether that is on some guided rides on some upskilling or on getting some more uh, tips and ideas for what to uh, what to stock in their business how to prepare themselves for welcoming cyclists oh yeah I can see some comments coming in from Ian as well there's a new community hub in Closeburn in development and it's fantastic they will definitely take away some of the ideas um, hoping to have e-bikes for rent and a small shop and cafe love to hear that um, one of the community hubs um, in the Scottish Borders in Stow, they have bikes for hire now as well. So really fantastic to see so many, so many community hubs, community enterprises getting involved in the cycling market. Um, I can also see from, yes, from 
Elizabeth, in terms of mapping software. Really happy to send around some information. One of the mapping softwares we have used to create GPX files was um, Google Earth, actually, which is free to access. If anybody would like to unmute themselves and ask any questions directly for our speakers, please feel free to do that as well.